Okay, so in this video, we will consider our third and final type of discontinuities, namely an infinite discontinuity. We'll consider two examples, and it will be really clear what it takes to have an infinite discontinuity. So here's the first example. We'll take a very simple rational function. f of x, say, is 1 over x minus 4 squared. Well, we ask, where are possible discontinuities? We know that rational functions are continuous everywhere on their domain. So here we simply have to ask, well, where could this function be undefined? Well, if there is a division by 0, therefore if x minus 4 is 0, therefore if x equals 4. So x0 being 4 is a point of discontinuity. Well, it will be fairly clear if we try to evaluate f at 4, we'll get 1 over 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 squared is 0, so f of 4 is 0, and of course 1 over 0 is undefined. So as the function is not even defined at 4, clearly 4 is a point of discontinuity. Well, let's see why we will say that x0 being 4 is an infinite discontinuity. Well, let's ask now, what about the limit? of the function f of x as x approaches 4. Oops, x minus not x plus 4. Let's look at our case. As x approaches 4, 1 is always 1, over, as x approaches 4, x minus 4 approaches 0. What's interesting here, because we are squaring the expression, it always will be strictly positive. Regardless if x is less than 4 or larger than 4, we're squaring, so we'll always get something very small, but always positive. And we know what this gives us, right? If you take 1, and divide by something smaller and smaller and smaller, you will either get positive or negative infinity. But as we know that this quantity here is always positive, 1 over something very small and positive is very big and positive, and so this gives us positive infinity. And that's why that we call x0 being 4 an infinite discontinuity, because around x equals 4, the function blows up. And we can visualize this graphically quite easily. Our function has a very simple graph. The point of interest is 4. We have already stated the f of 4 is undefined, so there's no value there. And as x approaches 4 from the left or from the right, the y values are getting larger and larger and larger. And if you notice here, we have 1 over a square. The function, therefore, is always positive. And because as x approaches 4 from either side gives positive infinity, x equals 4 is also what's called a vertical asymptote. As x approaches 4 from the left, y blows up to infinity. As x approaches 4 from the right, y also blows up to positive infinity. And so the graph of our function looks something like this from either side. So it's pretty clear that you will have an infinite discontinuity at a given point as long as the limit from the left or from the right will blow up to positive or negative infinity. So here's our first example. Very simple. Let's consider one other example of an infinite discontinuity. So here's our function. 
Let's take 1 over 2 to the x minus 8. So we have once again a familiar function. 1 is defined everywhere. 2 to the x minus 8 is defined everywhere. But once again, there is a division. So we have to be careful not to divide by 0. Well, 2 to the x minus 8 is 0. If 2 to the x is 8, therefore if x is 3. So a possible point to this continuity is x0 equals 3. And it is as f of 3 will be 1 over 2 cubed is 8 minus 8 is 0. And 1 over 0 is undefined. Now, of course, this implies that we have a discontinuity at x equals 3. Well, what type is it? Now, here, if we try and let x approaches 3 from both sides simultaneously, so the two-sided limit, you will have a 1 over 0 case, but you will not be able to tell if it is positive or negative, as it will vary from either side. So here we'll consider the limit from the left and the limit from the right. Let's start with the limit from the left. As we have just said, we have, as x is very close to 3, 2 to the x is close to 2 to the 3, which is 8, minus 8 is 0. So we have a 1 over 0 case. But we will not know if this is positive or negative infinity until we know if this is positive or negative. Well. Once again, consider a real line. x approaching 3 from the left means x is less than 3. So exponentiate both sides, the base 2. So you get 2 to the x, therefore, is less than 2 to the 3, which is equal to 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, and so 2 to the x minus 8 is less than 0. So when x is smaller than 3, our denominator, 2 to the x minus 8, is negative. So we have a 1 over negative 0 case. If you divide 1 by something which is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the result is bigger and bigger and bigger. As we have a positive over a negative, we will get negative infinity. Well, what about the limit from the right? At this point, you probably will be able to guess. Once again, we have a 1 over 0 case. But is our quantity positive or negative? We consider our real line. x is to the right of 3. Therefore, x is greater than 3. Exponentiate both sides with the base 2, so 2 cubed. is less than 2 to the x. The 2 cubed is 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, and so 0 is less than 2 to the x minus 8. So our denominator is positive. So we have a 1 over positive 0, which gives us a positive infinity case. It doesn't matter that the limit from the left yields negative infinity, and the limit from the right yields positive infinity. As soon as one of the two limits blows up, we have an infinite discontinuity. And again, the point x equals 3 will be a vertical asymptote. We can produce a rough sketch of our function around x equals 3. Once again, as we've just said, x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. And now we have to be careful, as on both sides, the function behaves differently. As x is very close to 3, but smaller, the y values are really, really large and negative. So the function will look something like this. As x is very close to 3, but slightly bigger, so to the right, our y values are really large and positive, so it will look something like this. And that's it. So, even though both limits are different, they both blow up. So we have x equals 3 being an infinite discontinuity.
and there you go. Now in our two examples, both limits blew up. In the first case, both were positive infinity. In this case, one was negative, the other was positive. But we could consider an example where the limit from the left is 5, and the limit from the right is positive infinity. As long as one of the two limits blow up, we have an infinite discontinuity. And this will be our conclusion. So if the limit from the left equals plus or minus infinity, or let me put it here, I have more space, or the limit from the right of our function also equals either positive or negative infinity, doesn't matter if they both blow up or if only one blows up, this will imply that x is 0, is what's called an infinite discontinuity. And that's it.